Hey everyone, please support what I do to help keep Greyhawk alive by subscribing to the channel. Also, please consider becoming a channel member to get early access to videos, exclusive live chats, quarterly adventure modules, and more. Thanks, and enjoy the show. So one of the questions I get asked a lot is, how do you start a Greyhawk campaign? So that's what I wanted to talk about today on Greyhawk Grognarn. Now, for those of us who are veterans to Greyhawk, it might be, you know, it might sound a little simple. How do you start a Greyhawk campaign? Well, you start a campaign and you put it in Greyhawk. Oh, problem solved. But for somebody who's just coming into it and might not be as familiar with the various products and and choices and so forth, it, I thought it might be a good idea to, you know, kind of ease through the process a little bit. Um, and first of all, you need to figure out what time frame you want to set your game in. There are three basic choices. Uh, 576, which is when the gold box was published. That's this, that's the one that I'll, most people my age will uh, associate with the World of Greyhawk. Uh, there are other choices, however. There's 585, and these are years I'm referring to, in-game years. So common year 576, common year 585. 585 is uh, after the so-called Greyhawk Wars, uh, when the setting has changed a lot. And your other choice is 591, which is once the wars have settled down and, and things are, you know, still kind of ravaged, but getting back to normal. Um, now, the 576 time frame, that first one, is basically a time of stasis. Uh, you've got uh, powerful good kingdoms and powerful evil kingdoms, and they're kind, there's a lot of tension between them. There's balance between the, the good and evil forces. So if you want to go into a kind of classic D and D setting where there's you know there's a lot of choices and 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 so forth. That's probably your best bet. That's also the first published uh, version of the of the setting. So a lot of people like it for that reason because it gives them the most options. You can take your campaign in any direction. The next choice is 585. This is the From the Ashes era. Uh, there was a box set called From the Ashes is up on the shelf behind me. I didn't bring everything. Um, and this is a period when the good Kingdoms have pretty much been shattered. Evil is on the ascendancy. The evil demigod Ayu is in the north, has conquered a whole huge swath of territory. The evil uh, Scarlet Brotherhood in the south has done so. Similarly, the great kingdom in the east has shattered into a bunch of evil states, and there's humanoids and demons running around all over the place. So it's a very dark, uh, darker setting. So if you want to, to do a what used to be called a points of light setting, uh, you could do that there because you know you you have the, um, the the brave adventurers fighting against the odds to to stem back the tide of evil. And your other choice, five ninety one, uh, this was uh, uh, obviously later on. It was uh, published in a couple of different uh, 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 products, and things are kind of swinging back to normal. Uh, back to the to the 576 era, there, it's kind of undoing some of the damage that the wars caused. Uh, the kingdoms are coming back uh, together and getting stronger. Um, the evils kind of being driven back. You know, so you're you're kind of on the tail end of that, and and there is a great deal of hope. So it's it's kind of like uh, evils on the run. And if you want to take place in that kind of uh, setting, that you, then you can set it there. So those are your three basic choices. 576, uh, Balance, 570, uh, 585, uh, Evil Ascendant, and 591, uh, Evil on the Run. And I should say, and it probably goes without saying, but uh, you should get the appropriate works for that period uh, if you're the DM. So if you're doing 576, then you want to get the gold box. If you're doing 585, you want to get... Um, uh, uh, from the ashes, and if you're doing 591, you want to get the adventure begins or the living Greyhawk as a tier. Now, the next major choice you want to make is what game system are you going to play? Um, and it seems as obvious you're going to play D and D, but there's there are great differences between first edition and second edition, and, and so forth. Um, obviously, today most people are going to be playing fifth edition. Uh, there is no fifth edition Greyhawk, however. There is there are no official um, source books or, or or anything like that. They never they never did that. They focus on the realms. There's a few fifth edition things here or there, uh, official um, Watsi publications. But on the whole, they didn't 
really support the setting. So you're you're going to be on your own. Uh, fortunately, on my blog, um, greyhawkrognar.com, if you go to the free resources at the top, you'll find tons of hundreds of pages of free downloadable uh, fifth edition resources for Greyhawk. There's new uh, classes and subclasses and um, feats and spells and all, you know, all that good stuff is in, is in there. Everything that you would expect to find is 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 in there. Um, now, a lot of people don't like 5th edition. I'm one of them. Um, uh, for a long-term campaign, anyway. Uh, I would recommend personally first, but uh, honestly, you can play it. We I've seen Savage Worlds. I've seen people doing um, a Rune Quest Greyhawk. I mean, there, there's literally, it because it is a setting, it can be rules agnostic. Um, you'll just, you know, if, you know, depending on the choices you make, you might have to do more or less work. If you do fir- first or second edition, there is a ton of Greyhawk material that you can download. Uh, third edition as well. Uh, you, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a ton of, of material out there on drive through or wherever that you can get and, and give you all the background and uh, some of the mechanical stuff that you need. It should be pointed out, however, that the earlier editions, there aren't that many mechanical connections because the, the, game didn't require it you know um in first edition there there aren't like specialist you know this is what a ranger looks like who comes from kale land um it just didn't happen uh so you know there's there's much less mechanical tinkering that needs to be done to get it to a setting um Second edition, there were a lot of fan-made stuff uh, out there on the old AOL boards. A lot of it's probably not available anymore. It's been lost to the ages, unfortunately. Uh, I wrote a ton of stuff back then in the, on the in the olden days. Um, you know, but uh, you know, depending on the system you choose, you're going to have to do some work. Um, you know, to to kind of customize it to Greyhawk, um, if you so choose. Like I say, because Greyhawk is a setting, it is system neutral, and you can you don't have to make it. Uh, you know, you don't have to customize the system around the setting. Now, the next thing you're going to have to do is figure out where to start. Um, you know, it is a big, huge uh, campaign setting. There are places all over the place. Um, most of the campaign material that you're going to find is centered around the middle here, the central finesse, right? You see that big lake behind me? That is called the near dive. Um, that is the center point of the campaign setting, and because just below it, just south of it, is the city of Greyhawk. Um, that's where you're going to find Castle Greyhawk and the ruins, and you know a lot of the modules are set around there. Um, you don't have to do that. You know, it, it's just that's where you're going to find a lot more support um, printed uh, material. Uh, if you do do that, <clears throat> then your best bet is to start with the Temple of Elemental Evil. This is um, this contains the village of Hamlet which is very famous. Um, it contains, the obviously, the temple. There's another village called Nulb. Uh, there's a well-defined story arc. There's NPCs, and so there's a lot of background. It hooks into the setting very well. Um, this is o- often called Greyhawk's starter uh, zone, right? This is, you know, the village of Hamlet is designed for new characters to come in and uh, and start the adventure. Uh, you know, so this is, this is a a really good choice. There are others, however. Uh, the um, Keep on the Borderlands, which is a very famous starter module as well. This was originally a generic module. It was later retconned into Greyhawk um, in the uh, in the southwest portion of the continent. You can really put it anywhere, though. Anywhere that there's a, a border, uh, uh, you know, there, there's a place that's bordering wilderness. Is you know, it'll fit in. Um, it doesn't have quite the connections to the setting that uh, Temple, Temple of Elemental Evil does, but you know, there there you go. Uh, you could uh, do a homebrew uh, dungeon. You're going to want a a village and a dungeon. Um, and then just keep going from there. And you, you know, there's a ton of places that will work great for set for that kind of thing. Um, you know, I, I, I could do a whole video just on where are good uh, starting zones. Um, you know, there's uh, uh, around the Flinty Hills there uh, in, uh, to the southwest of the Bone March. There's you're going to get a lot of humanoids, and you're going to have, the, and they're going to be fighting humans and gnomes and dwarves and so forth. You know, that you, so you you got this ready-made conflict uh, down here in um, in the south uh, southeast. You've got the Iron League, who's at war with the Great Kingdom, and then the Great Kingdom falls apart, and they're still at war. You know, there's a whole lot of places and stuff you can do. Um, you know, so it's just personal choice. My 
recommendation is Temple of Elemental Evil, but there are other choices. And lastly, you're going to want a tentpole dungeon. Um, and the reason for this is D Greyhawk is kind of designed around the idea that there is this vast, massive dungeon complex at the center of the campaign setting. And the players can go there anytime they want um, and explore the levels of the dungeons. Um, the problem is they, ne they, they never published Gary's version of the dungeon. So there is an official one, uh, Greyhawk Ruins, which is really good. Uh, it's very different than Castle Greyhawk. Do not get Castle Greyhawk. That is a joke and, and was designed basically to, uh, to insult Gary Gygax, so I would not recommend it. Um, but uh, Greyhawk Ruins is a fine dungeon, and you can use it for that purpose. You can also use my Castle of Mad Archmage, which was designed to be my homage to Castle Greyhawk. Uh, you could also, if you have it, um, Castle Zagig. Uh, the upper ruins, uh, the upper works. Uh, you know, it's got the the castle part and the first level of the dungeon, and then you could expand it down that uh, on your own. Uh, there are there's another possibility though. You could center yours on El Raja Key, which is um, you know Mori Castle uh, is is what it's called, um, and um, uh, you know that's uh, Rob Kunz's uh, dungeon. He was the co DM of the original campaign, and you could use that as your tentpole dungeon too. Um, alternatively, you could uh, pull in something like Rabbanathuk. You could, uh, you know, uh, Stonehell. You know, there's a lot of uh, mega dungeons out there in the OSR today that could function in this uh, capacity. You know, and especially if you're not set starting in that center area. You know, if you're starting up here in the uh, in the Rakers, you want a different dungeon. Stonehell will fit in there. You know, something like that. Um, but having that tentpole dungeon, in my opinion, is something that you really want in a Greyhawk campaign because it helps recreate that feel of, you know, yes, there, there's all this other adventure going on, but, uh, the, but always looming in the background is that huge dungeon calling to you. Um, you know, so that's, uh, that, that's my recommendation on that. And there you have it. I mean, I think between those, uh, the, you know, those few choices that you're going to make, uh, you know, that's what you need. Uh, there's a there's a ton of stuff you could add on into it. You know, there's a you know, you pile in all, as many modules and box sets that you can. Um, you know, go to town making your own stuff. That's Greyhawk's designed for you to make your own stuff. That's really where it shines because originally, originally, it was uh, designed to be very brief and yet evocative to give the, the DM the maximum amount of r creative space for his own work. Um, you know, so please never think that you only have to go with published stuff. That's the point of Greyhawk is it is a framework for you to put in your own campaign. Um, but between these choices that I've just outlined, that gives you a, a start. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. Do you, uh, how would you approach it? You know, what choices would you make if you were restarting a brand new ca campaign? For people who are new to the campaign, has this been helpful? I want to hear from you. Let me know. Hope you're having a wonderful day and I will talk to you later. Thanks for watching today's video. Please remember to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Below you'll find links to my Patreon which helps make these videos possible. You'll also find the web store where you can buy my books, and my blog where you'll find all sorts of free downloads and other articles. Thanks and have a great day.